Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the latest case from Montech. This is their R903 Max. It has an MSRP of only $79 for the white version that I've got here. The black version is $75, which is a pretty cheap price when you see all this case has to offer. But before we get onto the case, let's take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard, I'm going to be using the Biostar B760A Silver. For the CPU, I'm going to be using Intel's 13th Gen i7, the 13700K. Keeping our CPU cool, I'm going to be using a 360mm AIO, it's the Valkyrie Dragonfang. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Kingston Fury Renegade at a blistering fast 7200 mega transfers per second. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe drive for this build. It's from Team Group and it's their T-Force Cardia A440 Pro in 1TB capacity. Powering the whole build, I'm going to be using a 1200W fully modular ATX 3.0 power supply from Montech. It's the Titan Gold. For the graphics card, I'm going to be using the Zotac Gaming RTX 4070 AMP Arrow. Okay, so that's all the parts. Let's make a start by taking a closer look at the case. To remove our tempered glass side panel, we've got two captive thumb screws at the back we need to loosen. We're then going to be able to pull the panel backwards, tilt out and lift away. To remove our other side panel again, there's two captive thumb screws on the back which we need to loosen. Once they're loosened, we can pull the panel backwards and lift away. Taking a look at our front I.O., we've got a power button, we've got two USB 3.0 Type-A ports, a single Type-C port, a separate headphone and microphone jack, we've got a reset button, and an LED button to cycle through the effects in the case's built-in ARGB controller. On the top of the case we've got a magnetic dust filter which can simply be pulled away. At the front of the case we've got a magnetically attached mesh panel which can simply be pulled off from the bottom. Take a look at the back of the front panel, you'll notice there's no dust filter and Montek are going with just mesh at the front. And we've also got the perforated areas on the side of the front panel increasing the case's airflow. The rest of our front panel can simply be pulled off from the front. So you can see at the front of the case, Montag have installed three 140mm ARGB fans. Alternatively, if you prefer at the front, you can mount up to three 120mm fans or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator. And credit to Montag, all of the fans in the case have four pin PWM connectors on them. So I have no plans to change the three 140mm fans at the front, so I'm going to return the front panel. At the rear of the case you can see we've got another 140mm fan pre-installed, although this one doesn't have any ARGB on it. Again, if you prefer, you can mount 120mm fan at the rear. Up at the top of the case it's up to 320 or 240mm fans, or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator. We've also got space on the power supply surround to mount two 120mm fans. You can see we've got some screw holes here, and the idea is you set your fans on top, and then screw them down into the case using some long radiator screws, although unfortunately the screws to mount the fans at the bottom aren't included with the case. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to E8X in size, and if you want to go with a CPU or cooler, the maximum height supported is 180mm. At the rear of the case we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets, and in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 400mm. On the bottom of the case we've got a tray style dust filter over our power supplies intake which can simply be pulled out from the back for cleaning. Moving to the rear of the case it's great to see we've got these three velcro cable straps down the middle of the case and we've got plenty of other cable tie down points as well. Cable cutouts look to be in sensible enough places, there's ones under here and it's good to see that the two cutouts over to the right hand side of the motherboard have rubber grommets on them. In terms of cable routing space this also looks fairly reasonable. So our case's fan and ARGB hub is at the top of the case, and you can see our four pre-installed case fans are plugged in. We've got our four PWM connectors here, and the three ARGB connectors from the front fan. With all these fans plugged in, we've got two spare PWM connectors, and also three spare ARGB connectors. And you can see here we've got this cable coming from the LED button on the front of the case, allowing us to control the ARGB effects on the controller. And now we take a look at our case cables, you're going to see the hub is going to be able to be controlled by the motherboard, both for PWM and ARGB. Just make sure you plug the SATA cable into your power supply or the hub isn't going to work. Behind the motherboard we've got two dedicated 2.5 inch drive mounting brackets that are each held on with a non-captive thumb screw. And once this has been removed, the drive bracket simply be tilted out and lifted away. So you're going to mount your drive onto the back of it, screwing in from the back before returning this to the case. We're also going to be able to mount a further two two and a half inch drives towards the front of the case. You can see we've got these rubber grommets here and the idea is you're going to set your drive up into place and then use the screws from the case accessory box to screw it in from the front. 
In the hard drive cage at the bottom of the case, we've got both our instruction manual and our case accessory box. I'll show you what's contained in the case accessory box now. So this is everything that comes in the case accessory box. So we've got plenty of cable ties in white to match our case's colour. And it's great to see that all our screws come individually packaged and labelled. We've got some additional standoffs, the standoff insertion and removal tool. We've got some screws for mounting motherboards and SSDs on the removal brackets. We've got some power supply screws. We've got some additional screws for securing the SSDs at the front of the case using the rubber grommets. And we've got some hard drive screws. And we've also got our instruction manual. So in the hard drive cage at the bottom, we're going to be able to mount one three and a half inch drive in the drive cage itself. And then on top of the hard drive cage, we're able to mount either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive. Now this drive cage is both movable and removable. And if we take a look down at the bottom, you can see our drive cage is installed in the slot position further towards the front of the case, although there's an option to move it closer to the power supply. To do that, we're going to need to remove these two thumb screws. And then with the thumb screws removed, we're able to pull the hard drive cage towards us and then lift it up to free it. We can move it to the other slot and push it back into place. And then to secure it here, we would simply need to put the two thumb screws in at the bottom. Now I'm not planning on installing any hard drive, so I'm just going to remove the cage. So our power supply is going to go down at the bottom and the case is compatible with full-size JTX power supplies up to a maximum length of 240 millimeters. Although if you go ahead and remove the hard drive cage like we have done, you've got absolutely loads of space for your power supply and associated cables. As you'd expect in a case in this price point, we don't have any removable power supply bracket at the back of the case. So we're going to have to insert our power supply from the side before screwing it in from the back. We're now ready to start working on our motherboard and we're going to install our CPU, the backplate for our CPU cooler, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before putting the motherboard into the case. To open the socket cover, we're going to need to push this lever down and out and bring it all the way to the top of the motherboard. And then we're going to be able to open the socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU down into the socket. You'll notice we've got notches at the top and at the bottom to help line it up. And we're going to make sure we insert it with the text the correct way round. Once we're happy our CPU is sitting correctly in the socket, we can go ahead and close the lever here. And if we apply a little bit of pressure here, this bit of plastic will pop off. And we'll put this in the motherboard box for safekeeping. Then to secure our CPU in the socket, all we need to do is close the lever down again. Next, we've got our M.2 SSD to install. And I'm going to install it in the top slot behind this heatsink, which is held on with two screws. So we've actually got two M.2 slots behind the heatsink. This one is for our M.2 SSD, whereas this one is for a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. And you'll notice it's much shorter on this side. And we've also got the cables coming from our antenna installed here if you do want to go with a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Another nice thing that Biostar do with their motherboards is the M.2 screws are installed in the motherboard standoffs. So you don't need to go searching for them in the box. So we can go ahead and remove the M.2 SSD screw. So all I'm going to do with these antenna cables is I'm just going to remove them from here. And then I'm just going to free them up at the other end. And then we can remove the cables. So obviously you're planning on installing a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. Don't remove the cables, just simply connect them up to your module. So next we can go ahead and insert our M.2 SSD into the socket. And then we can flatten it down and secure it with the screw we've just removed. If you're using the motherboard from new, you'll have some plastic protection on the back of the heatsink that you're going to need to remove. We're now ready to install our RAM, so we're going to need to open the clips on the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. Next, we can line our RAM up with the slots. Once we're happy the RAM's lined up correctly, it's just some firm pressure and it's going to clip into place. Same thing with our second stick, line it up with the slot. And again, once we're happy it's lined up, some firm pressure. We're now ready to install the bracket for our CPU cutter because we've got an LJ1700 motherboard. We need to put all these clips to their outer setting. And then it's just a simple matter of lining the back plate up with the motherboard and then it will simply push into place. And then we've got one of these spacers to go into each corner. The thicker end screws into the back plate. Just before we install our motherboard, we need to install our IO shield. It's just a matter of pushing it into place, taking care not to cut yourself. Next, we can set our motherboard into the case, line that up with the standoffs at the back. And then we're going to secure it into place with nine of the motherboard screws from the case accessory box. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring the cable through the cutout 
and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. Next to that we've got a system fan header, so we'll bring the PWM cable coming from our hub through, line it up with a header, push into place and then pull the access cable through to the back. Our front panel connector is going to go into this header here, a third from the right hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring our cables through the college and you can see we've got a whole load of individual cables which need to go into specific pins on this header. So it is important to pay close attention to the diagram in the motherboard manual when plugging them in. So I'm going to make a start down in the bottom row working from left to right. So pins 1 and 2 are for hard drive LED positive and hard drive LED negative. And next to that we've got our reset switch. Moving up to the top row we've got power LED positive and power LED negative. And then next to that we've got our power switch and then we can pull all the excess cables through to the back. We've got our USB 3.0 header here on the right hand side of the motherboard, so we can bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And then pull the excess cable through to the back. Just below that we've got our Type C header, so we'll bring the cable again through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. So on the top right of the motherboard we've got three RGB headers. The top one is a 12 volt 4 pin connector and that's not the one we're after. The bottom two are 3 pin 5 volt connectors and they're ARGB connectors. So that's what we need to plug the cable coming from our Kisses hub into. So we can go ahead and bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And again we'll just tuck the excess cable through to the back. We are now ready to install our power supply and it is fully modular, it comes without any of these cables plugged in. I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables that we're going to need. So I've plugged in our 24 pin cable, two 8 pin EPS cables, our 12 volt high power cable and also a SATA power cable to power our ARGB and PWM hub. Now this is an ATX 3.0 power supply because it does come with this 12 volt high power cable which is really nice because we're not going to have to use any of the adapters. If your power supply isn't an ATX 3.0 power supply you can use the adapter that comes with the graphics card in the box and on the end of it it's just got two 8 pin PCIe cables so you're going to plug two separate cables coming from different ports in your power supply and plug one cable into each of these adapters and then you're going to have a 12 volt high power cable to plug into the graphics card. So this is our power supply's intake fan, so we're going to want to install it facing down where we can get cool air from underneath the case. So it's just a simple matter of pulling our case cables up out of the way, sliding our power supply into place and bringing it all the way to the back of the case. We can then secure the power supply into place with four of the power supply screws from the case accessory box. The next thing to do is get our power supply cables plugged in and we've got an 8 and a 4 pin EPS cable to write additional power to our CPU at the top left of the motherboard. If your power supply doesn't have two EPS cables coming from it, you can just plug in the 8 pin cable. The 4 pin cable is for additional power for your CPU if you're going for a particularly powerful CPU or you're planning on overclocking. Our power supply has two EPS cables so it makes sense for us to plug both of them in. So one of our cables splits up into two 4 pin connectors so we're just going to need to plug one of them in to the header on the right hand side. So just a matter of lining it up with the motherboard and pushing into place and then we'll pull that cable through to the back. And then our other cable is a full 8 pin cable that doesn't actually split. Line it up with the header and push into place and again we'll pull the excess cable through to the back. Next we've got our 24 pin cable and it's going to go into this header here. So we'll bring it through the cutout. We can line the cable up with the motherboard and push into place. And then we'll pull the excess cable through to the back. So I did mention I might install some cable extensions. So I'm going to add a 24 pin cable extension in to let you see what it looks like. And all we're simply going to do is plug in the other end of the cable to the cable extension. There we go, that's it clipped into place. We can then pull this cable through to the back. We can then plug the cable extension in to the slot on the motherboard. And then our cable extension has some cable combs to help organise the cable. So that's what it looks like with some black and white cable extensions installed. So you've seen both so you can decide whether you want to add them or not. I'm not adding cable extensions for our EPS cables because once we've got our radiator and fans at the top we're not really going to see that much of them. And for our graphics card it's going to be installed in the vertical position and we're not actually really going to see very much of the cables either. So it's really only the 24 pin that you may or may not want to install extensions in this build which is going to make things a little bit cheaper. Then at the back of the case we need to plug the SATA cable coming from our case's ARGB and fan hub into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. 
We're now ready to start working on our I.O. and the first thing to do is set our fans onto the radiator. Now importantly we're going to want to have these cables coming out towards the back. So I've already lined this up in the case and this is going to be the back. And then we're going to use the long radiator screws that come with the I.O. to secure the fans to the radiator. Okay, next thing to do is get the cables connected up. So we've got a long cable coming from our first fan. We can line it up with our second fan and push into place. And then same thing with the next fan, line the cables up and push into place. We then get this adapter cable with the fan. So it's just a matter of pushing it into place on our last fan. On the other end of the cable, we've got two different connectors. We've got a four pin PWM connector, which we're gonna plug into our CPU fan header, allowing our motherboard to not only power the fans, but adjust the speed depending on the CPU temperature. The other cable is a three pin five volt ARGB cable, and this is gonna control the lighting on the fans. Now we can plug this into an ARGB header on our motherboard. Alternatively, because our case has an ARGB hub, we can plug it directly into the ARGB hub. Now, coming from this cable, we've also got an additional ARGB splitter cable, so we can plug in another ARGB device, and then we're gonna be able to control the ARGB effects on the lighting, plus something else from this cable. So we take a look at our pump. This is gonna be quite useful. Because coming from our pump, we've got another 3-pin 5-volt ARGB cable controlling the lighting on the pump. So we can plug it into that adapter cable, and that's just going to be the one ARGB cable that we need to plug into either our motherboard or our case's ARGB controller. The other cable coming from the pump is another 4-pin PWM connector, which is going to control the pump, part of the pump, but also allows to adjust the pump speed. And we're going to plug that into the pump header on our motherboard. Our AIO also comes with this very nice PWM and ARGB controller, which you are going to be able to plug into your motherboard for both PWM and ARGB control. Because our case actually has a built-in ARGB and PWM controller, it doesn't make sense to install two, so that's why I'm installing the AIO the way I am. Next, we're going to need to install the bracket for attaching to our motherboard, so we can remove the plastic protection from the cold plate, taking care not to damage the thermal paste on the cold plate. Then we can take one of the Intel mounting brackets and set it into place from underneath. And then we can take one of the screws from the accessory box and pop it into place. And then one on the other side. And then it's exactly the same thing up at the top. And then we can return the plastic protection to the cold plate. We can then set the I.O. into place at the top of the case. Then we're going to secure it into place with 12 of the shorter radiator screws. and then we can replace the top dust filter. And then gonna pass the cable coming from the fans through to the back of the case. Our CPU fan header is this one just to the left of our RAM. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the PWM connector coming from that cable on the fans back through, line it up with the header, and push into place, and then pull the excess cable through to the back. The other connector coming from that cable is our ARGB connector. And of course we could plug this into an ARGB header on our motherboard, but we do have this ARGB hub already built into the case, so I'm gonna install it here. If you need a little bit of extra stretch, you can just pull the cable here to free up the PWM and the RGB cable. So all we're gonna to need to do is pull the plastic protectors off the headers on the hub. We then just simply need to line the ARGB cable up with the hub. Next, we can remove the plastic protection from the cold plate. And just before we set this into place, I wanna show you how I like to manage the cables coming up the AIO. So this is gonna be the bottom, and the two cables that are coming up, I just like to wrap around the side of the I.O. so they're gonna be nicely managed up the side when we're installing it. We then just need to line the I.O. up with the bracket beneath, and then we've got a thumb screw to go on to each corner. And then I'm just gonna tighten each of the thumb screws in turn. We can then remove the plastic protection from the pump, and you'll notice that the logo on the pump is rotatable. And then I'm going to pass the cables coming from the pump through to the back of the case. Our pump header is just here, so we're going to bring the PWM cable back through. We can line it up with the pump header and push into place and then pull the excess cable through to the back. The ARGB cable then coming from our pump, we can simply plug into the other end of the cable coming from our fans. So a couple of extra things to tell you about the I.O. If you've installed it with your tubes in a different position and you want to rotate this round, this is magnetically attached. So it's just a matter of getting your nail in here and you can pull the little plate off and then you could install it up the other way had you got this turned upside down. But we'll put it back. It was the correct way for us originally.
And I've got this additional plate with a slightly different logo in with the I.O. as well. The other thing that comes with the I.O. is these tube clips. So we wanted to help organise our cables. It would just be a matter of pushing these onto the tubes to help keep them organised. Um, I think they actually look pretty good without the clips on, so I'm just going to leave them without any. We are now ready to install our graphics card, and because I'm going with the vertical mount, we need to remove the bottom six PCI expansion slot brackets. I've already tried this bracket in the case, and it's much easier to remove the top one as well. Install the bracket, and then put the top slot back. So I'm going to install the graphics card to the bracket outside the case and then set the whole thing into the case as one piece. Um, the reason for this is that once you've got your rear case fan installed, actually screen down and securing your graphics card in the case can be quite difficult. So I'm just going to open the clip on our riser cable. can then line our graphics card up with the slot. I think we're just going to need to lift the bracket up slightly to get it to go into place. There we go, that's it clipped in. And then we can secure the graphics card to the bracket with the same screws we used to secure our power supply. And then we can put one of the spur slot covers that comes with the bracket into place. So we then open the clip on the top PCIe slot on the motherboard. I'm just going to set our GPU loosely into the case first of all. And then I'm going to line our riser cable up with the slot. And once we're happy it's lined up, just some firm pressure to it to get it to clip in to the motherboard. And then I'm going to lift the bracket up. And I'm just going to try and get it lined up with our case. There we go, so that's it clipped into place. And then we just need to secure it to the case with the thumb screws we removed earlier on. And then I'm going to reinstall the top expansion slot cover. We can then tuck the riser cable down behind the graphics card. Next we can bring our 12 volt type power cable through the cutout at the back and get it plugged into the graphics card. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management, so we're able to get the side panel back on again. So that's the build complete and looking great. If you don't know how to install Windows, the drivers, enter the BIOS, update the BIOS, adjust all the BIOS settings and set up the RGB, I've made another video which covers all of that. So I'll put a link to that video in the description. What I'm planning on doing now is some thermal testing and then I'm going to be back with a full case review. So if you are thinking of doing a build in this case and you want to find out how well it performs thermally and what I actually thought of the case, you're going to want to check that review out and I'll put a link to that video in the description. So hopefully you have enjoyed this build guide. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.